Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our meditation is from the Gospel reading. We listen again to these select verses. And the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, were listening to all these things, and they disrespected him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is exalted among men is an abomination before God. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the parable that Jesus speaks to us this morning is oftentimes titled the dishonest manager. But if you look at it closely, you could call it the selfish manager. Or maybe even possibly you could look at it from a mirror. Notice what the manager does. He's dishonest, he's selfish. He serves only himself. The text does not tell us exactly what he did to get fired by the, by the owner, but he is in the process of getting fired. And what does this manager do? Well, who is he concerned for? He's not concerned for his manager. He does not go to his manager and say, I'm sorry, or does he even plead for his job? No, he knows he's guilty, and he can only think of himself. So what does he do? He says, I know what I'll do. I am too weak to dig, and I am too proud to beg. Quite ironic, isn't it? Because figuratively, he does dig his own grave by what his selfishness does. And yet he also, in the end, will beg for a living just at a higher level from richer people. Notice all things he says. It's all a matter of I, I, me, myself. It's all about himself. Even his own predicament. He thinks what he's going to do because he's only concerned about himself. He's not concerned about the owner at all. Nor about the debtors. He's only concerned about me, myself, and I. And so once again, he cheats the owner because he only thinks of himself. Sounds familiar, does it not? Or it should sound familiar. Because you and I are exactly the same way. We many times can only think about ourselves. And Jesus tells us, who are you going to serve? Is it going to be God? Or is it going to be money? You can't serve both. You can't stand on the fence. You have to be on one side or the other. So which is it going to be? That's easy for us to ask that question to ourselves because we many times will answer the answer, yes, I'm for Jesus. But in reality and who we are and our thoughts are very similar to the selfish manager. We many times thrive on serving only ourselves in almost everything we do. We may try to justify it before others by thinking that we're serving others, but in the end, we're many times only serving ourselves. It has once been said, I don't know how much I really believe this, but it's once been said that most people in the church do things in the church only because they're serving themselves. Well, I don't know. Probably. Because that's the kind of people we are. If you look at it, most churches, maybe Trinity is one of them as well. If you look at all the things that have been dedicated to the church and have been given to the church, oftentimes have been given because the people who gave it didn't want it in the end. The refrigerator sitting in the church garage, it's there because the Joneses didn't want it anymore and they got a new one. So they didn't know what to do with the old one, so they gave it to the church. Serving self. Wow. We're many times just like that. We try to serve ourselves. We think, what is in it for me, myself, and I? Just like that selfish manager. Even in terms of theology and doctrine, 
even in terms of living our life in the faith of Jesus Christ, we think to ourselves how great the law is as long as it's not pointed at me, right? As long as it's said to somebody else, as long as the person next to me hears what God wants them to hear, I'm good with that. But when it comes down to it, when God tells you that you are a selfish sinner, we don't want to hear those words. When God tells us that you are just like that selfish manager, the dishonest manager, we think to ourselves, I haven't done that bad in life, have I? Yet in reality, that's exactly who and what we are. For you see, even when we try to serve others, we even fail. And even trying to serve others, we are still selfish in our mindset. Deanna and Joe, they heard their neighbors arguing about every other day. And it even got worse to go into about every day that the neighbors of Joe and Deanna would argue. And so they came up to them and said, why don't you come to a marriage counseling, a marriage retreat and counseling session that we're involved in? And after a few days, the neighbors thought it over and they said, sure, we will go. And Joe and Deanna thought to themselves, this is a good way to show them what a good marriage looks like, right? They're at the marriage retreat. They're sitting around a circle. And the counselor asked them, you should know things about your spouse. So he looked at Joe and said, tell me, Joe, your wife Deanna, what is her favorite type of flower? And Joe, without beating an eye. He said, well, that's easy. All-purpose Pillsbury. Wow. We love to serve ourselves. We really do. Even when times, sometimes themes like we're serving others, we still want to serve ourselves. And we, as a public, who see things that people have done, we oftentimes think our, to ourselves, what a magnificent gift they gave like the person's name on the hospital building, or the building of the university, or the simple fact that that person always dedicates their life in service to others. Yet we many times are selfish. That's just the sinfulness that we have in ourselves. But God is the exact opposite. No, when it comes to us, things that we see as great things, as service to others, what does Jesus say is an abomination before the eyes of God? God knows what's in your heart. But God also has a remedy for it as well. He sent his son Jesus Christ to die upon that cross to take away your selfishness, your dishonesty, yes, your sinfulness. In his death and resurrection, God does away with our selfishness. For you see, God was not selfish. He was the exact opposite. He sent his son Jesus as a gift for us, that through his death, our sins are taken care of. His sacrifice is a sacrifice that gives us forgiveness and everlasting life, and his resurrection is a guarantee to us that we will also have everlasting life as well, that our resurrection is right around the corner. Yes, God is not selfish. He's the owner. He's the one who commends us. He's the one who forgives us. He's the one who loves us and takes care of us. A man by the name of Mr. Stackpole in 1998 was a fireman for the New York Fire Department. And he ran into a burning building, saved a number of people, and came out with numerous severe burns on his body such a great such a great injury that was suffered to mr stackpole that he was suggested by many friends and even his co-workers and even those above him in administration told him it's time for him to retire but he did not after recovery in the hospital and after therapy and he went back to the fire department in New York, and he served. He served others. And yes, that dreadful day of September the 11th, he was one of the firemen who ran into that second building when it collapsed on him. 
and he gave his life to serve others. He's a reminder to us what our God is like, that he gave up his own life for us, that we may have everlasting life. Yes, we, who many times are dishonest, we, who are many times selfish, serving money over God, but because of Jesus, because of his death for us, because of his resurrection for us, he calls us and grants us his spirit that enables us now to serve God over money. He grants us the ability to serve our church, to serve our fellow man, to serve those around us, not with selfish ambition, but with love and with respect that God has given to us that we share with one another. May God bless you and keep you in his grace and mercy and in his peace forever. In Jesus' name, amen.